Hello friends. Welcome to my first attempt ever at Vlogmas. What you are about to see is an exercise in me trying to practice what I preach. So I, this, it's 9 p.m. Um, but it's December 1st and I was committed to getting a video up today because I have been wanting to participate in Vlogmas, which if you're not an avid YouTube user, basically it's a, I don't know how long it's been going on, like five years, eight years, something like that. It's a, it's a common event on the YouTube land um, where YouTubers will post a video a day for throughout the entire month of December, or most of them will do it December 1st through the 25th for the 25 days of Christmas. And some people will go all the way to the 31st. I haven't decided. It depends if I make it. But I've been wanting to do Vlogmas because this is my first year on YouTube. And so I'm an Enneagram 7, so duh. If there's a fun thing to participate in, I want to participate in it. Plus, I'm still trying to like get faster at like how I deliver messages and editing the videos and creating thumbnails and getting everything uploaded. Like I'm trying to get good at this so it doesn't take me so long every week. So Vlogmas is an excellent way for me to do that. Thirdly, I want to participate. I want to get better at vlogging or YouTubing in general. Thirdly, um, I'm trying to build my channel. I have, um, I have 50 subscribers right now. And if you're one of them, thank you so much for being one of my first 50. I'm honored. I've only been here for a hot minute, like two weeks and you guys are already showing up. So I am just so grateful if you subscribe already to this channel, way more good stuff to come. So if you haven't hit the button yet, now would be an excellent time to do it. Um, but I would like to grow the channel because my mission in life is to set women free through wellness. And I have products and services and all kinds of stuff launching um, in 2021. And I just want to serve as many people as I possibly can. Um, so growing this channel is one of the ways that we can do that. Anywho, on to the topic. My shoulder is on fire, by the way. This is an exercise in isometric training. I'm gonna have to take a break. What I came on here today, today to tell you for my first episode of Vlogmas is um, I've been thinking a lot about and talking a lot with my private clients about consistency. And I, I really feel like people have some stuff in their heads that if I could help you reframe, um, if I could help you reframe a couple of things, it would be easier for you to stick to the habits that you want to stick to. Like there's nobody telling you that you have to, you know, drink however many ounces of water, or eat how many grams of protein or go to the gym every day or, you know, have quiet time in the morning or whatever. But there are goals that I'm presuming that you've set for yourself. And if you are like most of us, there comes a time, sorry, gosh, there comes a time where you're like, I've been doing this for two weeks and I crushed it, but now I'm burned out or I'm not seeing the progress I wanted to see, or I'm just tired of doing it or whatever the reasons are. And we need a break. And so we fall off the wagon. Oh, my pinky just went up fall off the wagon or whatever languages that you use. So um, I wanna give you some steps, some tips. I have five tonight to talk about how you can make consistency easier for the things that you truly want to adopt, the habits that you truly want to have that will get you to where you wanna be and who you wanna be. So the first thing to know is um, that consistency is actually harder than intensity. So doing something every day for a very long period of time, not 30 days, a very long period of time, weeks in, weeks out, months in, months out, years in, years out, doing something consistently is more difficult than doing something very difficult for a short period of time. Military boot camps, I would venture to say there's a lot of people that might be able to make it through that if it was a one and done six week experience and that was all there was to it. I don't know. I've never been to boot camp. I'm just saying, I think there's more people that could figure it out than who do it. It's the lifetime of military service that not everyone is in for. I'm just saying. Um, but like 75 hard is a challenge that 
one of my dear friends did and loved it and she's reaped a lot of rewards from it. There are some things that I think she's going to keep in her life long term, but um, the whole 30 challenges, um, ad training for a marathon, adventure races, whatever, like there's any number of uh, childbirth. There's any number of very, very difficult, intense things that you can do for a short period of time and short is relative, but doing things that are less hard, but for a longer period of time is actually more difficult. That is why so few people reap the incredible benefits that come from doing things consistently and why it's so amazing when you meet somebody that is a millionaire or, um, you know, has lived to be a hundred years old or something like that, or people that have been married for 60, 70 years, or when you meet people that have been doing something successfully for many, 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 many years, and they talk about how they do this, these things, and they've been doing them for decades, that's why it's pretty amazing because it's really difficult to do. So that's the first thing I want you to know is that consistency is actually more difficult than intensity for a short period of time. So respect it, but go after it. It's worth it. Now, so the, the, the five things I wanted to bring to our attention tonight, the first one is keep your eye on your why. Sounds cheesy, but whatever habit it is that you're trying to set, why? I know you, most of you are probably thinking because I want to lose weight. Okay, but why? Why do you want to lose weight? Um, do you want your children to grow up in a household with a healthy parent that models for them what self-esteem looks like, what energy looks like, what healthy foods look like, what joy looks like, what physical capacity for having fun and traveling? Like, do you want to do you want to create a legacy for your children? That is a why that far supersedes wanting to look a certain way in your jeans. Though it's not wrong to look, want to look a certain way in your jeans, we all do, but there's something deeper. There's something deeper. You want the respect of your husband or you want to save your child from something that you experienced. Um, there's something down there. There's a why that's deeper than I wanna look some kind of way. Find it. And then what I want you to do is assign a catchphrase to it. So one of the things I, when I have two kids and when I was pregnant with each of them in the early weeks, like before you tell people that you're pregnant, um, I, I don't drink like a lot, but I drink enough socially that people might, that I, in certain situations, people might've thought it was weird that I wasn't having a glass of wine or a glass of champagne or something, depending on where we were at. And in those early weeks of pregnancy, when we didn't want to tell anybody just yet, and I wasn't drinking and I didn't want them to be, you know, like when you've been married like a couple years and you're in your late twenties or whatever, people just always assume that you're pregnant. And so what I, I had to come up with a catchphrase, I said the same thing every time. So I never looked caught off guard like my face never gave it away or whatever. So I was just ready ahead of time before anybody said, oh, why aren't you drinking? I just automatically said, I even, I don't even remember what my catchphrase was, but I said the same thing every single time and I didn't even have to think about it. So that's what I want you to do for your why. Dig deep, find your why, and then find the why for that, and then find the why for that, and then find the why for that. Dig deep. What is your actual why for why you want to start whatever habit this is or stick to it and then assign it a catchphrase so you can remind yourself something that's just like a, a, like a time stamp in your mind. So you can say like legacy for my kids or I don't um, protect them from what I had to go through. Or if you're trying to get pregnant, you're trying to get healthy, trying to get your body healthier so you can conceive naturally. Just natural baby or whatever, like assign it a, you know, a one to three word catchphrase that you can just repeat to yourself over and over when it gets difficult to stick to your habits. So that's my first tip. My second one is choose your battles. And actually it's not choose your battles. That's the, um, the phrase. What I'm suggesting to you tonight is choose your battle. Pick one. Humans have a finite capacity for willpower and discipline. And so do not think that you are weak or stupid or fat or lazy or like any of those horrible things that we say to ourselves that we would never say to our best friend or our child or our mom. Like, I don't know why we talk to ourselves in such a way, but don't let yourself like take that easy road of beating yourself up when you don't stick to something or you don't behave in some kind of way that you want to. But instead, um, Remember that you only have a finite capacity for, for discipline and for willing yourself to do things. So choose your one battle. Don't try to quit smoking and 
go on a whole 30 or you know quit sugar or whatever like all at the same time you have to pick one the other dominoes will fall when you get that one habit and i would say cigarette is a bigger fish to fry than sugar but when you get that one habit under control once you're getting up consistently 10 minutes earlier than you used to and it starts to become second nature and you're doing whatever it is in those 10 minutes, reading your Bible, or you're starting your day with 10 push-ups or whatever. Like once you get that one habit down, the other ones are gonna feel easier. You're gonna crave more water. You're gonna be more likely to go for your workout. You're gonna um, actually like not rebel against vegetables or whatever. Like the getting the one thing is way more important than trying to do too many things at once and actually not doing it consistent, like doing it for long enough to actually make it stick. Pick the battle, choose your battle, figure out what is the most important thing that if I got this every day for a month or through the end of this year, since if you're watching this in real time, today is December 1st, 2020, what is the thing that I could do for the next 31 days? that everything else would become easier if I could do this thing consistently. It may be drinking water, it may be going to bed earlier, it may be not scrolling on your phone from the bed, whatever. What's the one thing that everything else would be easier if I got this for the next 31 days? All right, my tip number three is to schedule it. So one of the things that our pastors at my church say um, from the platform sometimes is show me your calendar and I'll show you your priorities. So. Um, if it is a priority of yours to spend time with the Lord, then block it out on your calendar. If it is a priority of yours to eat three square meals a day, then schedule it and put an alarm in your phone. You need to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And these are the times that I've picked. You may not be like starving or you may, it may be, you know, like you can tweak it, you can whatever, but show me your calendar and I'll show you your priorities. Put your workout in. And don't let people schedule meetings over it. It's a doctor's appointment. Like if it was an actual doctor's appointment, you would decline the meeting and you would go to your doctor's appointment. Like you have control over your life and your schedule, to maybe not 100%, but to more of an extent than I think we allow ourselves to believe sometimes. So schedule it, whatever the habit is that you are trying to consistently do, because that is what will communicate to you and everyone around you that this is a priority. All right, number four, um, I'm, I'm going to tell you to get rid of the phrase, I don't feel like it. That has to be struck from our vocabulary. I can't tell you how many things I don't feel like doing, and I do them anyway. For my children, for my husband, for our home, for my body, I don't, I don't ever feel like brushing my teeth. I find it so tedious. I do not get that, like, euphoric, proud, like, you know, feeling that I hear people talk about. Like, I hate brushing my teeth. I just find it inconvenient. But I do it because I don't want my teeth to fall out or my breath to be gross, you know? So ignore, ignore the voice that says I don't feel like it. It doesn't matter. You're a grown up and you have goals. So um, what I want you to remember about this tip, what number am I on? One, two, three, this is four. Um, people wait for motivation when really, I'm not sure motivation actually even really exists, or if it is, it's very, if it does, it's very fleeting. What, what works is action, and then the motivation follows. So like, as soon as I have my shoes on, and my workout clothes, and I've started to warm up, now I'm excited about what comes next. I'm ready to lift some weight. I'm ready to get my heart rate up. Like, but that's after I'm already at the gym, dressed, talking to people, like, the motivation comes way after the moment where I had to make the decision. I mean, if you're married, does that not happen with sex sometimes? Like, how many things can you think about in your life? Like, there are so many moments where the thought goes through your head, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like getting up from this chair right now and going and refilling my water bottle. I don't care. You're a grown up and you have goals. Don't wait for motivation. Ignore the voice that says, I don't feel like it. And do the action first. Motivation comes after action. That's a tweetable, but I'm not on Twitter because I have too many social platforms as it is. I can barely manage it. I'm almost 40, okay? All right, my last final tip, number five. Um, something is always better than nothing. So the all or nothing mentality, I think kills, especially women. Um, if it's not perfect, then we just don't do it. 
uh, I'm not saying all women. I know I struggle with that. But the all or nothing mentality is how we find ourselves in these situations where we're like, I fell off the wagon. I was doing great for two weeks or for six months even. Um, and then I fell off the wagon. No. Nah. Something is better than nothing. That's why you see me posting this janky video that I'm not going to edit in this terrible lighting with no camera stand. I'm just holding it in front of my barely made bed and my junky room like at nine o'clock at night because I said I was going to put a video up today to no one but myself, but I said it and I'm working on the consistency of participating in Vlogmas. So I have to get good at at being imperfect. I have to, I have to become okay with something is better than nothing. And it is so hard. But if you didn't get your workout in today and you're watching this, I want you to drop and give me 10. Do 10 push-ups, And then once you're already in the action, the motivation might come over you to do 10 squats and maybe 10 sit-ups. And before you know it, you just did 30 reps of something. That took you, what, three minutes, four minutes? Could you do it again? Could you do a round, like take a break, take a one minute rest and then do a round two? Like, could, could you set a timer on your phone and do five minutes of a workout in your bedroom? Oh, you already showered? Okay, well then don't get sweaty. Do yoga, go foam roll. Like something is always better than nothing. The all or nothing mentality will kill you. So what is the something that you can do right now? Not on Monday, not tomorrow, not on January 1st. What is the something that you can do right now? that will get you closer to your goals, closer to the person you want to be. It's not just about the thing. It's not just about achieving the thing. You are becoming the person you want to be in the process of achieving the thing. So five steps to consistency. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments which area you think is most impactful, which one is the most, which of those five tips was the most like, yeah, I can, I can totally do that. I can make a change there, and I think it's going to make a big difference. So tell me which one of the five. They were keep your eye on your why and create a catchphrase to remind yourself quickly. Choose your bad toll, singular. Choose your one battle. Um, schedule it. Uh, action comes before motivation. So basically just do it is tip number four. Quit listening to your voice that says I don't feel like it because you're a grown-up. And then number five, something is always better than nothing. Always. What's your something? So those are the five. I hope you enjoyed this. My intention is to post a video every single day in the month of December. We will see how I do. Please subscribe. Cheer me on. On Instagram, on Facebook, reply to my emails. Like, I will take all the extroverted rah-rah-ness that you can muster to help me be consistent. But I'm also going to schedule it. And I'm also going to post imperfectly because something is better than nothing. So I hope you enjoy and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.